I'm dressed up like the Stig's younger kid sister is because I have to. We're on a racetrack and we're driving a damn ZR1. Saying the ZR1 sticks to the road is like saying Bill Gates is one rich nerd. It doesn't really do it justice. The suspension is tuned specifically for the ZR1 and it's unique from other Corvettes. Big thanks for the super grip also going to the Michelin Pilot Sport Tires. I actually really like the steering in the Corvette. The effort's just right and you get a lot of good feedback from the front tires. One problem, you have to hold on to the steering wheel to keep yourself in place because the seats, they suck. You might think I'm exaggerating about how marginal the seats are, but no, I am not. I'm actively holding myself in place with my knees. It'd be nice if I could focus on other activities, you know, driving. Piston calipers in the front, four piston calipers in the rear, lots of braking force. One thing to keep in mind with carbon ceramic brakes, just like tires, they need a few laps to really warm up and be their most effective. So, you know, don't do like me and just blast through your first lap. Take it easy so you don't die. How much power does it take for a car to be insanely powerful? I don't know what the threshold is, but I think 638 horsepower and 604 pound-feet of torque certainly qualifies. All that power coming from a 6.2 liter supercharged V8, yowza, you can go fast. Unless the traction control kicks in. Speaking of traction, thank God the Corvette ZR1 has its performance traction management system. It provides a tiered approach to stability control. The system's key purpose is to help manage power delivery when exiting corners. There are probably drivers out there who can put power down better than the PTM system, but I'm not one of them. The ZR1 is a handful, but it's the kind of car that'll grow with you. As you get more comfortable behind the wheel, you can push this button twice, turn this little knob, and change the performance traction levels. I'm on traction level one. If it's wet, I won't spin. Traction level two, if it's dry, I still won't spin. Three, gives you a little bit more slip, Four, even more than that. Flip it over to traction level five, which is their race mode, and that'll give you plenty of leeway to do all sorts of stupid stuff while still having just a little bit of electronic intervention in case you get in over your head. Of course, the big question is, can you turn the stability control completely off? Why, yes, you can. Treating the ZR1 like your own personal drift machine is seriously missing the point. Yes, there's enough power to get the ZR1 sideways, but it's not built to be a drift machine, and it's not meant to be a stoplight drag car. It's meant to haul serious ass on a road course with a Nürburgring. The performance traction management system also includes a launch control feature. Just floor it, drop the clutch, and let the magical leprechauns that run the computers manage engine output. It's earth scorching acceleration made simple. Beyond pure power, the ZR1 features extensive use of lightweight materials, including a carbon fiber roof, front splitter, carbon fiber rocker moldings, and wider carbon fiber front fenders. There's even a carbon fiber hood with a little window so you can see the top of the intercooler for some reason. The net result is a curb weight around 3,300 pounds, heavier than any other Corvette and Chevy's lineup. Just imagine how heavy the ZR1 would be without all that carbon fiber. Add it all up and it's pretty obvious that the ZR1 is really meant for the racetrack. You can say that about any Corvette, but the ZR1 is special. It's really hard to overstate how capable this car is. If you buy a ZR1 and don't take it to the racetrack, it's an affront to the automotive gods. Just saying. That said, most buyers will probably use their ZR1s as street cars. Around town, if you want to drive like a responsible citizen, all you need is about a quarter of the throttle. We went up to a half if you want to drive aggressively, and anything beyond that, you're just begging for attention from the law. What's truly remarkable about the ZR1 is how docile it is during normal driving. The steering efforts are light, 
the throttle isn't overly aggressive, you can ease into power rather than lighting it up at every stoplight. Even the clutch has a light feel, which is impressive because it has to clamp down on 638 horsepower. Think a double disc clutch for that. Even the ride's not that bad. Rotate the magnetic ride control knob to tour, and the ride is still firm, but it's not punishing. The ZR1 is easy enough to drive that I would happily hand the keys to my mom. In fact, I did. swap my mom out for a pro driver and it'll hit 60 from a standstill in the low three second range on its way to a 205 mile per hour top speed. Considering what it can do, $112,000 for a Corvette ZR1 is a pretty solid value, even if it buys you a car with a Chevy badge. More worrisome than the badge is the fact that the interior is completely unimpressive, especially for a car that costs six figures. One key example is this. In a car made up of so much actual carbon fiber, they chose a faux carbon fiber interior trim piece. I mean, seriously, choose metallic or just plain black or really anything. Not a cheap imitation of the substance that makes the rest of the car so great. But what else does the ZR1 compete with? The Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG, Audi R8 5.2. In terms of performance, it'll hang with all of them. Of course, there's the Godzilla in the room, the Nissan GTR. It keeps pace with the ZR1 and does so for about $27,000 less. If pure speed per dollar is your goal, that's hard to beat. Then there are the intangibles, like the truly engaging driving experience and sound of a supercharged V8 that make the ZR1 so hard to pass up. Bottom line, for a relatively modest sum, the ZR1 offers more performance than most drivers on the planet will ever be able to exploit. thing about a car like this, you, the driver, are always the limiting factor. If somebody's faster than you on the track or God help you the street, it's because they're a better driver, period. If your ego can take that responsibility, maybe the ZR1 is the right car for you. Just budget a few grand for some good aftermarket seats. <laughs>